and the D is At the end of December, around Christmas time, Gypsy Rose Blanchard was released from a prison cell. Free to enter the real world. Like a butterfly with a damaged wing, she hobbled out, shoeless, to her new husband Ryan's car. Coincidentally or not, cameras flashing no more than 20 feet away from the prison's parking lot, they drove with a license plate insinuating death and violence back home to Louisiana, where her father she barely knew and her stepfamily, who grew a large social media presence on the back of her tragedy, popped champagne. Lifetime. They made a deal with Gypsy. She told her story and the cameras flashed. She told her story and the makeup deals rolled in. She told her story and the red carpet rolled out. But, tale as old as time, you only build a princess up to tear her down. It's the ways of the world, the Hollywood world. The princess sits on her throne only for a short reprieve. Here comes the fun. It's time for a new gang to enter the narrative and make it their own. The naysayers, the question askers, the ones who won't be silenced about the past. The old neighbors, the distant family members seeking their own 15 minutes of fame. Gypsy was a slut. Gypsy is a liar. Gypsy is a gypsy. Did you know, don't you know, now's the time to egg the princess. Here we go, round and round, now's the time to knock her down. She is too happy about all of this. Her marriage is a sham. She doesn't even care what happens to Nick. This is the truth. Well, the social media truth. So it might as well be true because it's all we'll ever know. If we met, stumbled upon Gypsy Rose Blanchard on a random street in a random town in real life, we might hate her more than we ever thought possible. Maybe we'd catch her kicking a dog and that's the lowest of the low. Or maybe we'd catch her crying on a street corner when she lost her phone and can't find her way back to the corner where she was supposed to meet her husband, Ryan. She doesn't understand this new world after being in prison for so long. She appears scared and worried about doing or saying the wrong thing in front of someone who might take out their cell phone and snap a picture of her and then put it all over the internet. She's kind to us and asks for help. She apologizes for taking up our time and thanks us for letting her use our cell phone. She's nicer and more normal than we ever imagined. Were we wrong about her? We can't know. We can't know someone's character from one tiny interaction or what we see on social media. But there is something I do know. I've spent the past 10 years plus working as a pediatric nurse, and a great deal of that time I was working with neurobehavioral developmentally affected children in acute care as well as long-term facilities to include child sex offender facilities. I've learned so much from real life experiences with these traumatized kids. Children with trauma become adults who need grace. They often enter adulthood with their own mental health issues such as anxiety, depression, personality disorders, ADHD, the list goes on and on. Most will not go on to abuse their own children, but some will. Many will enact some of the trauma out on other people around them because that's how they've been taught to interact with the world. It's a journey, longer and more treacherous for some. It can include awful things like lying, manipulation, drug abuse, many failed relationships, anger, destruction. 
These kids need to implode and then build themselves back together. Sometimes they parent themselves or hopefully they get support from others, but it takes a lot of time and requires learning a lot of new skills. That's probably where Gypsy is right now, learning a lot of new skills. A broken woman who needs to put herself back together as best as she can. Will she? Who knows? She refused therapy offered to her by the Dr. Phil show. She sped fast as lightning into her marriage. She's been all over social media and made enemies of old friends already. There's a lot to be suspicious of when it comes to Gypsy, not the least of which is what she's indicated about her crime and her former co-defendant. There's the reality that remains at the front of my thoughts concerning this case. Nicholas Godijan remains in prison. Dee Dee Blanchard is dead. Gypsy Rose is a free woman. And all seems to be settled in this true crime saga. Or does it? If you ask Nicholas Godijan, justice was never served in this case, no matter how you slice it. Godijan is currently serving a life sentence behind bars with no chance of parole, plus 25 years. Now it's understandable that his sentence would be more harsh than Gypsy's since he was the one who stabbed Dee Dee to death. But is life in prison for someone who slayed a monster and rescued a young lady really justice? Many, including Nicholas, think not. Godijan has stuck by the claim since the beginning, and Gypsy has backed it up, that he was manipulated into killing Gypsy's mother by Gypsy herself, where he believed if he didn't step in and stop the abuse, Gypsy would have died. Godijan had a parole hearing earlier this year, but was denied his request for a new trial. The man is now 34 years old and will most likely never see the outside of his prison facility in Missouri. In prior videos, We've spoken extensively about mitigating factors for Nick, which include, but are not limited to, his autism diagnosis, a lack of support at home, isolation, and manipulation on the part of Gypsy. Still, Nick protects Gypsy in many of the statements he makes about her, but he also confirms her deep involvement in what happened to her mom. I was deeply involved with it. I mean uh just like it says in his police statements uh like i said right with while i was talking to them there was latex gloves that be on the porch she did say that right on the texas it was clear clear as day i ended up finding them when i got there and i let her know that i was at the door she opened the door and she made sure i had the gloves on before she gave me the weapon and she made sure that she wouldn't let me open the door she made sure i had those gloves on before either of those doors opened Nick needs help. He's desperate. His appeal is not looking good, though he remains hopeful. Unfortunately, he's looking at spending his entire life in a place that doesn't offer him adequate counseling, support, or safety. A place that doesn't understand or care about his extra needs as a person on the autism spectrum. He's watched as Gypsy left prison, got married, went home to her family, and was heralded as the princess of the hour. Nick's hurting and alone. When this has been mentioned to Gypsy, she's made rather discouraging statements. Well, I'm sure that we both have a lot of regrets. All I can really say is that I did my time. He's doing his time for his part. Um, and I wish him well on his journey. I love in the documentary, you take, you take responsibility. You talk about, you know, you, you are doing the time that you were given. Um, but he will spend the rest of his life in jail. How, how do you feel about that? How do you kind of reconcile that? Um, you know, I know that we both probably have a lot of regrets. I know I have regrets. Um, I can't speak for him, so I really don't know his side of things. Um, all I know is, you know, I did my time. He's doing his time. Um, that's all the best that I can do at this point. Like, for me, I have to focus on myself right now. I can't look in the past and worry about him or anything else going on. I have to prioritize myself in this moment. Here's where I need to say something. Many of you may be mad about this video. There's a movement happening to cancel Gypsy. Everyone hates her now. The ways of the Hollywood narrative are firmly implanted in her life. But I have an undeniable tendency to look at the side of the narrative that isn't currently popular. 
I was hating on Gypsy when she first got out, and now I'm looking on the other side of what's going on here. She's a murderer, that's undeniable, but she's also a victim in the worst kind of way, and no matter how much you hate her, that's also undeniable. Coming to the point of this video, Gypsy manipulated Nick. He only committed murder to please her, to save her, to help her. He suffers in prison, possibly forever, for her. He had no pony in this race. He didn't care about Dee Dee one way or another. He did talk to friends about not wanting to kill Dee Dee. But said in the end, Gypsy made up her mind and he had to go along with it. So, Gypsy is responsible for his current situation on a certain level. But is it her responsibility to save him from the bleak future we all see for him now? No, it's not. Gypsy Rose Blanchard has no further responsibility to Nicholas Godijohn. Let's take a look at it like this. Two lonely people named John and Mary are addicts. They live on the street together and do horrible things to feed their drug addiction. Lie, steal, prostitute, assault and steal from friends and family, all while under the influence. Eventually, both John and Mary are arrested and they're sentenced to treatment. Mary has a strong, supportive, financially resilient family who visits and supports her throughout treatment. John has no one. Mary is successful in treatment and fully committed to getting out of prison. John is deeply depressed and unable to be successful at anything. In his treatment, he fights and tells everyone he doesn't regret his past crimes. Eventually, Mary is released and goes home to fight a new battle, trying to reintegrate into society. Is it really now Mary's life's purpose to try to save John? No psychologist or therapist would even sanction that as being healthy for Mary or John. Let's say both John and Mary had horribly abusive childhoods. That's how they initially bonded with one another. Mary is the one who first introduced John to drugs. But does that mean he has no personal responsibility? Can any of us really say in this scenario that Mary needs to devote her newfound freedom to helping John? Now, what if we find out John has autism? For me, it still doesn't change the fact that Mary's life is her own. She needs to focus on her own sobriety, freedom, and mental health. She cannot save John. She doesn't have the skills. She doesn't have the emotional capacity. She doesn't have the knowledge or capacity to help John. So who does? Gypsy and Nick are both victims of communities and laws that do not serve their very special circumstances and needs. They were both abused or neglected. They both required some kind of intervention from outside sources, and they didn't get it. Once the murderous act was complete, they needed a justice system that took into account their own personal histories to include all the special needs they were presenting with. They needed exhaustive therapy and reconditioning to better understand social norms and develop real-life coping skills. They could have also faced punishment and consequences while still getting this much-needed help. They could have been housed with people who had some of the same issues and not with hardened felons who might use, manipulate, and mistreat them. Their sentences should and could have been based on these intensely mitigating factors. They needed mercy in the face of serving real time, but also being given the chance to get better. So, this is where I make my case and a special plea. This video is really about how it isn't up to Gypsy to change the course of Nicholas Godijohn's life. It's up to people like you and me. 
It's up to me to stand up and make a difference in my own community. It's up to you to work on yours. We are the communities who failed these kids. We are the people who support the legal systems, who do such a terrible job reforming and punishing people for their crimes. We are the ones who need to demand the change we want to see. How do we help? Nick is asking for people to sign an online petition. I'll have it linked below. But it's my own personal experience that petitions don't do an awful lot. One thing we can do for a start is to tune in to a new YouTube channel started by Nicholas Godejohn supporters and family on March 1st. On March 1st, Nick is supposed to make some statements for the first time in years via this channel. It's our chance to hear what he has to say. To judge further with our own intuition how he's doing, where he is right now in his own mental health, and how we can potentially help him in the most safe and sound way. I will be tuning in and live streaming afterwards to chat with all of you about what Nick has to say. The YouTube channel is linked below. I hope you'll join me on March 1st. Nick deserves another chance. There is one responsibility Gypsy still has to him. Get out of the way. Get out of the way of Nick's second chance, Gypsy. Speaking out negatively in any way against Nick is not a good look for Miss Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Gypsy recently shared some BS statements on her social media speaking out negatively about Nick. Trying to demonize Gypsy Rose and defend Nicholas Godejohn. I am so sick of seeing the people on here defending colored autistics just because they're autistic because you know damn well if that was a woman or a man of color who committed that act you would not be giving him the grace that you are you would not be sitting there giving excuses for the fact that nicholas go to john there's been proof that he has sick necrophilic fantasies grape fantasies uh wanted to grape gypsy's mom's corpse and has shown himself to be a danger to himself and other people but you guys are still gonna say him you cannot be manipulated into murdering somebody okay i'm sorry you can't you cannot be m manipulated into murdering someone and if arguably if he was that high support needs then someone should have been monitoring him here's what's up i don't expect gypsy to be able to understand nick and the obstacles he's facing with his autism diagnosis she doesn't get it she's over in delulu land louisiana living her own life, doing her own thing. So get out of the way. Get out of the way, Gypsy. We are not going to be manipulated by you and your uneducated ways of shitting on your past co-defendant. What are you scared of? Let Nick tell his story. <sighs> All right, friends. Thank you for joining me here tonight. Please join me again next time when we are going to head down yet another rabbit hole. Welcome to the Mothership Explores. We are talking about Nick Godijan today and what his life was like before he met Gypsy, what his life is like now, what his life would be like if he was out of prison. I don't think that's ever going to happen. He's always going to be in a controlled situation, but his life could be significantly different if he were in a mental health facility as opposed to prison. For sure. And um, I'm Katie here from Down the Rabbit Hole at Bedtime. Of course, I'm extremely interested in talking about this subject. I've been covering it on my channel as well. And I have a long history of doing research on autism in prison. In my own personal opinion, our prison system requires in-depth reform. And someone like Nicholas Godijan is one of the reasons why reform is so required. So, of course, um, when this case first came to light in the public, one of the most interesting issues 
up for debate was the fact that Nicholas Godijan is diagnosed as being on the autism spectrum. He allegedly, and it was found to be true in a court of law, committed the actual murder of Dee Dee Blanchard. But many of us are questioning like what his capacity was, what he understood about what he was doing, and could he have been manipulated into performing this act? What are your thoughts on that, Katie? Do you think he could be manipulated into this? This may not be the most popular perspective, but from my point of view, I definitely believe that Nick deserved some kind of understanding from the court about his developmental disability. For me, this whole situation is like a huge nightmare for a family, for a mother of a child with autism. Um, I think there are a lot of us out there that would have a lot of concerns about our child with a developmental disability participating in behaviors once they become an adult that we can't control or maybe stop them from participating in, especially when we don't know about it. Um, so I know that there's a large group of people out there that are very inclined to want support and help for Nick, and I am definitely one of those people. My hope is that this podcast can be, if nothing else, a cautionary tale for parents who have adult children with autism.